Well, when the pandemic hit, calls to crisis hotlines shot up dramatically. The isolation and anxiety that the pandemic brought on was devastating for some people. And the people of Hoylton Youth and Family Services are here to help. And they're our sponsor of this segment. And joining me now is their president and CEO of Hoylton Youth and Family Services, Chris Cox. Chris, thanks so much for being here with us today. Leslie, thank you for having us on to talk about this important topic. Absolutely, and it is an important topic. It's a heavy topic, but very important, especially as we enter the holidays. And you really do suggest to young people to really educate their parents or their caregivers that it is okay to talk about mental health and suicide. That's right? so important, and I really appreciate this opportunity because it is important for all the parents out there to really understand that we need to engage our young people, we need to listen, we need to be aware of the warning signs, and we need to be brave and act. And knowledge is power, and I love what, that you just said, be brave and act. What are some of the myths that are out there? You know, there, there's many of the myths that are out here. Uh, and I think, first of all, I think maybe given some statistics and why this is so important. So 25% um, of young people through the pandemic that's went to emergency room has identified an increased uh, negative impact on behavior and emotional impact. We also know that suicide is the leading cause of death for young people between the age of 10 and 24. Uh, and we also know, Chelsea, that the suicide itself runs across the gamut. It's just not for youth. But today we really wanted to focus on the youth piece. But unfortunately, suicide cuts across all of our segments of our society. And it's so important for us to be willing to lean into this conversation. You talked about the myths. There are many of them. And because our time's short, the one I really probably want to lift up and talk about the most is oftentimes I hear parents say, well, I don't want to talk about it with my young people because that will only encourage them to do it. It won't. And the reality is that's not true. We as parents need to really be aware of the warning signs and we need to be able to really engage them and it really starts with us being comfortable to have this difficult conversation. And Chris, you really just mentioned the warning signs. What are some of the warning signs when it comes to suicide? So, so there's many of those. Um, make sure I get them here. Talking, um, young people oftentimes, they, they drop a little hints in conversations or they even may leave a letter or notes for us parents. And it's really important that we take that as a sign. There's also talking about the home, uh, being uh, helpless or having no reason to live. Those are all language that gives us the opportunity as a parent to really be able to engage our young people in. Talk about being trapped, unbearable pain, which is really sad and we know that our young people just going through the normal adolescent experience has so many of these dynamics that impact them. And through COVID uh, and through the pandemic, we really found that the isolation itself almost seems to, to accelerate that to some degree. And these are opportunities. Um, we we'll also see other warning signs, increased use of alcohol or drugs. For someone who hasn't experimented yet as a parent, if you see this is happening, it's one of those signs we want you to be aware of. Um, acting anxious or uh, agitated or behaving reckly, uh, reckless is often one of those signs that we see and we really want our parents to be able to know that that is a moment for you to, to be able to interject. Sleeping too much or too little, I have adolescents and I know they're nocturnal. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hard as parents to really get that. But, yeah. but we are in tune to our children and when their systems and the way in which they sleep or their wake patterns change, that's a sign that we need to be open for. It. Um, withdrawn or isolate themselves even more. We know that most of our young people live on their device and they can be withdrawn even within the family dynamic. But it's really important for us parents when we start seeing those signs is to be brave and ask them. Let's talk about it. Absolutely, and, and I love that you, you keep mentioning the bravery, but on top of the bravery, it's about being in tune with your child or in tune with your niece, your nephew, whoever it is that's an adolescent in your life. If we see some of these, these warning signs, what can we actually do to help? Well, there's many things we do. First is we gotta be comfortable enough about having the conversation. So part of us being on the, on, on the uh, show today is to really lift up that we have to break down the stigmatism and this uh, uh, view that our society has on mental health. It's a shame, it's an embarrassment for too many folks, and the reality is we're losing children because of our own issues. And we've gotta get past that, Chelsea. We've gotta be okay to be able to recognize that my young person's struggling here and I have an opportunity to help. Yeah, and we have to break the stigma. And one of the ways that people can also help if they see some of these warning signs are calling a hotline. What are some of the hotlines that are out there that people can I believe we're gonna be putting up some numbers here, but there's a number of them in the area. And here's what I would say is you first, if as a parent, start with your pediatrician. 
if you really think something's not right and you're looking for resources, that's a place to go. But there's also National Suicide Hotline, which I believe is going to be up on the screen. Uh, there's also a crisis text line, knowing that our young people really live with their devices in their hands. And this is a number that they can text and get immediate resources. We also know the Trevor Project provides crisis intervention and suicide prevention for the LGBTQ plus community, which is really important. So there's a number of, uh, of phone numbers that we're going to put on the line, and we encourage you to reach out. We also know there's a number of organizations like Hoylton and many others in our community that provide these services, and we encourage you to reach out to be able to explore these resources and give them a call. Absolutely, and you also offer counseling care services as well. If you're interested and you're watching at home and you think that an adolescent in your life could use some assistance, go ahead and give Hoylton a call. Their number is 618-688-7040 for those counseling services for residents inside of the Metro East. Chris, thank you so much for being here with us today. And again, if you're interested in all of those services, not only give them a call, give them a follow on Instagram, Facebook, and you can visit them on their website, hoylton.org. We'll have a lot more after this quick break. 